Good morning class, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I am Professor Whittington. Make sure you sign the register in the comments below, just like these amazing people did in the last class. In this class, we're going to be looking at blocking out our level, so we'll bring some meshes in and get them arranged as they will be in game. And we'll also add a camera so that we can get that in place, again, so we'll know how our game looks. So, we'll not talk about it anymore, we'll just do it. So hang on and we'll start. Ah, hello again. Right, in this step, what we're going to do is get the level blocked out, basically. We'll create a simple material, we'll get a camera in place, so we've got an idea visually of how this is going to work. So the first thing I'm going to do to get this layout is I'm going to change to, uh, from my perspective view, to this top orthographic view. Uh, and orthographic views are great because they don't show perspective, so they're really good for lining things up. And you can see here is the centre of my world known as the origin or 000. And what I'm going to do is go into my static meshes folder and the paddles kind of going to be the center of the world, the most important thing for me. So I'm going to drop that in here. I might need to just zoom in a touch. There we go, there's the paddle. And what I'll do to make sure that I get that to 000 is I'm just going to use these properties here. So 0, 0, 0. And that's now in place. And what I'll do is line everything else up in relation to that. So we'll get the ball. And we're going to put that at zero on X and we're just going to move it up a little bit on Y. Looking nice. Then we'll get the, the game bounds in place. So I'm just going to throw that in and we're going to put it at zero on X for now and zero on Y. And then we're just going to move it over until it's kind of central. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, it's about seven on either side. That's about central. So now I've got almost everything. The last thing we need is to get some blocks in place. So I'm just going to throw it in there and let's just get it central. Uh, like so. And then we're just going to move it up and get it into place. So let's take it up near the top. And I'm just going to put this one in the center about as high up as I want to go, which is about there. And then I'm going to duplicate these. And the easiest way to do this, or the fastest way, is if you hold Alt on your keyboard and then move it, it will actually create a copy of it and move it down. So I'll put that kind of gap in there. Uh, we'll repeat the gap again. And we'll do one more. We'll have four rows of them for now. And then what I want to do is duplicate these over. And I could just select all four like this by holding Shift and duplicate them all together. Or a nifty little trick which I learned today is if you hold Shift and Alt, and then that'll give you a marquee selection and you can select all four like that. And then what I'll do is I'll go like that and hold alt again as I copy. And I'm just going to put the same sort of gap in each time. And then we're going to hold shift and alt again. I'm going to select all of those and hold alt and just duplicate these over to that side. So that gives me my, my blocks that I can aim at. So now we can come out of this orthographic view. Let's just see what it looks like. Yeah, pretty nice. I'm happy with that. So let's go back to perspective. And at this stage, we'll realize that we can't see anything. That's because there's no lights in this because we started from scratch. So there's a couple of things we can do to remedy that. I'm just going to change it to unlit. And that will at least allow me to see where everything is. And what I'll do as a more permanent solution is I'll just create a material that's emissive so that we won't need any lights for now. So... As you can see, I've already created the materials folder. You should do the same. I would show you me creating it, but it won't let me delete the one I created earlier. Whatevs, I'm not upset about it, but make sure you've got materials folder. And then in there, we'll create a new material. So right click, and we'll go material. I'm gonna call it M underscore um, basic. It's just a basic material. So we'll double click on that bad boy to get it open. Hello there. And all we need is a vector parameter. And the way I'm going to get that is I'm going to press three on my keyboard and left click, and that will give me a vector constant or a constant three vector rather. And then to make that a parameter, I'll just right click and convert to parameter. And I'm going to call the parameter color. And then I'm going to connect that to both the base color and the emissive color. And I'm going to make the parameter white like so, whoosh, beautiful. Okay, 
that's done, we can save it. Awesome. And now that that's saved, I can just close it and I'm going to go into my static meshes folder and I need to apply that material to each one of these meshes. So we'll start with the ball and we'll add M underscore basic, save. And you can see now things are starting to happen. So we'll do it to the blocks as well. So let's assign the basic material there, save, lovely. And the game bounds. And save again, and finally, the paddle. Ooh, yes, save. Okay, so they're all done, let's just check. Yep, looking good. So we can just close all these static mesh editors so that I don't slow my computer down too much. And now what I want to do is put a camera in the level so we can get an idea of the layout. So we'll go over into our modes panel here, and I'm just gonna search for camera. And I just want the basic camera, so I'm just going to throw that in anywhere. It doesn't matter where I put it because I'm going to set it to 0, 0, 0. Like so. So that just puts it in the center of the world. And one of the cool things this does is it creates, uh, while you've got it selected, so there it is. While you've got it selected, it shows you what that camera can see. And what I want to do is pin that so when I deselect it, it will stay there. So I'll always know what the camera can see, which is very useful. And then I'm gonna press F on my keyboard just to frame it up so I can see what I'm working with for now. And I can see that it's facing the wrong way. So I'm gonna press E to turn on my rotate tool and point it that way. And then I'm also just gonna lift it up a little bit and point it down. I don't know what angle I want yet. We'll see what we got. Uh, and before I can line this up really, what I'm gonna to need to do is get the preview right. So you can see that this camera's too wide. It doesn't match the sort of dimensions of a phone screen that we set it to. So we need to do that. And what we can do is here, this aspect ratio, we can put in the width of the camera and that will sort that out. So we went for 480. So I'll type that in space X and then 640 and press enter. And you can see that now looks a lot more like the phone screen that we're going for. So you can decide what kind of angle you want this to be at. So I'm going to go, just turn my move tool back on, a little bit higher. And one thing I'm going to do as well is change my field of view. Um, and because I'm redoing this, I did find that last time I preferred a field of view of 55. So I'll go with that again. And then what I want to do is just get this set up so that I'm happy with it. So let's just move it back a bit. And I'm just using this view here just to guide where I want it. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher, a little bit further back, and that's pretty good. So that gives me an idea of how my game's gonna look. What I'll also do to check this is just click on play, and I would like to get an idea of how it looks in here, but as you can see, that's just not right. Where did that window just go? Come back here, window. So you can see, I can move around in here, but it's not, not what I'm looking for. So we need to make it so that when we start the game, it's using the camera that we just put in there. So we'll go to the camera again. We're gonna scroll down and we're looking for auto activate for player. I'm just gonna set that to player zero. And then when the game starts, it, it knows that we wanna use that camera. So let's click on play again. And there we go. So I've possibly got a little bit too much black space at the bottom. So what I might do is just move that up a bit to about there. And then let's have another look. Yeah, that's much better. So by the time we've got the, the cliffs going up here, and we've got, um, we'll put a castle in there, it should look pretty good. I might tweak the, the camera angle and position as we go, but that's just to get it set up for now. Okay, so that does it for this step. In the next step, we're gonna set about getting this actually playable, start moving things around, creating some actual kind of code, do some scripting. So I look forward to seeing your beautiful little faces in that one. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody. And for that reason, all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free and were supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy governor and support our work, as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction, then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.